Hi everyone, today we are going to talk about the 10 tips in order to make a better looking CV and irrespective of whether you are going ahead and joining a B school or you are looking for a job opportunity, these tips will still stand true. So let's start off with the first tip which is to know which part of your CV has to be prioritized and which will be looked most often by a recruiter. In order to carry out this exercise, take out a printout of your CV and fold it into two halves, first horizontally and then vertically. Now the part that you see on the top left most corner is the part that will be most often looked by a recruiter. So any point that you definitely want the recruiter to not miss should be there on the top most buckets and towards the front of your CV. The second tip is to make use of balance buckets. So bucket refers to a portion of your CV. For example, academic achievements, internships, extracurriculars, PORs, these are all buckets. Now a good CV will have equal amount of proportion of points in all these buckets rather than having a lot of points in let's say work experience, but nothing to showcase in extracurriculars. So that's the second tip you should follow. The third tip is to make CV variants. So when we were studying at IIM Ahmedabad, we were recommended to make at least four variants of our CV based on the profile that we were applying for. If you are applying for a marketing profile, your CV will have different order of buckets. You might want to show extracurriculars on the top as compared to showing work X. And if you are applying for a consulting job, then maybe you would want to put academics on the top. So you need to make different variants of your CV when you are applying for different jobs so that you are able to tweak the points according to the job profile that you are applying for. The fourth point reflects how professional your resume is. And before I reveal the point, let me share about a creative writing agency that does a stellar job at making a professional resume. So in one of my previous videos, I had mentioned about write right. The video was an SOP writing. But when I went to their website, I found out that they also do CV making, which is a service which is provided by professionals who are working with write right. So in case someone feels ineligible to make a CV on their own and the CV is critical for their job interview or for their MBA admission, I would recommend you to reach out to write right and try approaching them for making a professional resume for you. I'm recommending them because I can vouch on their quality. They were suggested by my batchmates. So I'll put the link in the description for you to check it out. Moving on to the point now. The fourth point is to not repeat words that have been mentioned once in your CV. This especially happens when we are starting off the sentence with verbs and we end up using the same words again and again. For example, I led a team of five members. I led this project project rather than saying that you can say I spearheaded the project or I directed a team of five members. So the more varied the verbs are, the better it's going to look. The fifth point is to make use of numbers in your CV. A lot of times people end up mentioning words and they are not using any numbers, which makes it impossible for the person to understand the impact that you had. So for example, rather than saying that I participated in a certain contest that the person may not have any clue about, you can say I participated in a contest in which there were about 50,000 participants. That highlights the impact or the size of the contest. So make use of numbers in your CV. The sixth point is regarding proper formatting. A lot of times people end up using italics or bold too often. See the point of using bold is to highlight that that particular point is important and you shouldn't highlight the entire line. You should highlight only certain words that are important. For example, numbers or name of a certain company or a competition that you want to highlight. Don't mention every single thing in bold because essentially then what you're saying is that my entire CV is important and you don't need to focus on certain points more than the other. One way to ensure that you highlight the most important important points is by using tip number seven, which is to make use of a CV header. This is very common these days. Essentially what you're doing is that you want the recruiter to notice some of your points and you're putting them at the top of your CV using the CV header. The eighth point is just a recommendation to not use your photograph in the CV. It doesn't look very professional and these days it's not even relevant. So instead of using a photo, just follow a standard template, which I would link in the description. You can make your CV using the same. The ninth point is to focus more on skills in your CV rather than tasks. So I was rejected for an internship in IIMs because the professor said that my CV did not reflect what skills I gained by doing certain projects. So let's say that you've worked 
worked in a company and you've worked on certain projects or you are a student and you've done a live project you don't only have to mention about the project or what exactly you did you have to mention the skills that you gained out of it if there's a tool that you got to learn if you know excel out of it you need to mention it in your cv so that the recruiter or the professor is able to understand what are the skills that you bring on the table if they hire you the last point is to respect confidentiality but at the same time show the impact by citing what client you worked with so a lot of times when we are working with companies that we cannot reveal names of we end up skipping that part entirely instead you can mention something like i worked with a large conglomerate or you can say i worked with a large it company a leader in that particular sector what so and so valuation or what so and so net revenue you can mention anything like this to show the worth of the project that you were working on and the size of the client that you were working with so these are a couple of of things that i would recommend to someone who is planning on making a cv either for mba admissions or for job opportunities i just hope that these tips help you make a stellar cv going forward thank you so much for watching this video